Did you know Godot Engine is available as an app for Android? You can download the app from the Play Store, and you can make a game on your Android devices. But should you? Our objectives are, we're going to take a look at the Godot app, it's in early access. We're going to see if there's any bugs before we get started. We're going to see what other apps we would need in order to make assets, 2D and 3D. We'll also check out the import process for Android, and what else could we use the Android tablet for. Godot has a lot of hype around it for good reason. It's an amazing feat of open source and a great tool for game developers. I originally learned Unity, and with the recent policy changes, I wanted to see if Godot is something worth picking up. While I'm still using Unity currently, I might not in the future, depending on future policy changes. So I saw that Godot is available on the Android tablet in the Play Store, and I wanted to try it out and see what the Android environment was like for a game developer using just a tablet. Let's check that out. I will be using a Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra with the keyboard attachment. I am not using a mouse, I'm using the trackpad included with it. First, let's take a look at Godot on the tablet itself. The interface is exactly the same on the desktop version, except it has two built-in touchscreen joysticks for moving around a 3D scene. I did encounter some very specific bugs that I'm going to touch on lightly. This is Godot for early access. I don't expect things to work perfectly. Most of the issues that I have were also resolved when I updated the app. The mesh preview was showing these colored dashes in a black background. Uh, there should have been a preview for the 3D object here, but... Yeah, instead it was showing this. Next, my right-click was being held hostage. For some reason, it kept thinking that I was holding right-click, like I tried to undo here, and it said that I can't do that while the mouse buttons are being pressed. I wasn't holding anything. I even turned off the touchpad to make sure that it wasn't being touched that way, and it still had the same issue. This one's not a bug, but when you did hit play, it would open up a second app window, and it would hide the stop button behind the window, so it was a little confusing to figure out that I just had to move that over in order to quit the games that I was trying out. This next one is going to be a flashing light warning. I'm going to have a timestamp on screen to skip to if you're sensitive to that. It's going to flash the whole screen orange. Uh, anytime that I clicked or held down click, it would just flash orange. So if it's a longer orange screen, it was I held it longer. I had to restart the app in order for that to go away. And that leads us into the next one. When it restarted the app, my sphere was gone. I don't know why. It was just not there. I even tried to run the game to see if it would show up, and it still wasn't there, so it not only was not visible, it just didn't exist anymore. Next, I wanted to look into creating the assets for the games on the tablet itself. Here we have Ibis Paint. This is a free version. It also has a paid version for $9.99, and I was able to bring in a chibi character outline and then trace it and then make a PNG out of this. Export process was very straightforward to make a PNG, and that would import into Godot nicely to be used as a character or sprite or whatever. And I'm not an artist, but this app was very easy to get into with a Photoshop background. Next, we have Infinite Painter. I found this to be a little bit more difficult than Ibis Painter personally. Some people might like it more. The layering system on the far right was strange. I didn't figure out how to delete a layer. But I was able to draw a really simple and bad looking duck. The export process was also straightforward to be able to make a PNG. And this app is $9.99 as well, with a free version available. Next we have Krita. This is an open source app, so it's completely free to use. I was able to use it to make a small bouncing ball animation here. And nothing fantastic, but it is something that's able to make PNGs, JPEGs, etc. And also be able to export those as individual PNG frames, which should import into Godot quite nicely. Just remember if you're exporting an animation to render the animation. And I forgot to turn off the background, so remember to do that part. Next we have Piskill. Piskill is an online based pixel editing program. You can use this on a web browser. Though I had some issues with the screen dragging with the pen on the tablet. It's a simple pixel drawing program that allows for animation and the assets can be downloaded easily. This app is free on the web browser. Another browser based app is Photopea. We can use this on the web browser on the tablet to make Photoshop-like documents. You can also export these to Photoshop, PNG, JPEG, and a bunch of other different formats. I was able to use this to make a very simple snowman and then export it to PNG. It's nicely fully featured, and if you use Photoshop, you can export the file type to that, so that way you can bring it into Photoshop as well. Unfortunately, the Android tablet does not have Photoshop, but if you use it on the iPad or desktop, you can do that. Next, we're going to take a look at creating 3D assets on the Android tablet. First, we have 3D modeling app. Seems to be a pretty good, fully featured 3D modeling app for the tablet. It was a bit quirky with moving things around, but that's going to come down to experience with the program. I was able to create this snowman pretty easily, and there are a lot of material choices that are also nice. Moving things around and navigating was easy as well. There are a lot of options nested under the main icon, so I feel like it would take a little while to remember, but it seems like it's nicely featured. 
Unfortunately, the free version only lets you export to their app's format or to a picture. The app uses a subscription model which allows you to export the models to FBX or OBJ. It's $5.99 a month or less if you subscribe for a year. I'm recording this after as I just found this app. It's called Prisma 3D. Once you start it up, it actually shows that it was made in Unity. It goes through a nice little tutorial here on how to use the app. I was able to create a very simple snowman, give it a scarf, and be able to adjust the individual faces on it to extrude them. And then I was able to add individual materials. The export process is very straightforward. It exports to OBJ files completely free. And I was able to import those into Godot, drag it into a 3D scene so that I could see it. It didn't seem to keep the actual materials that were on it, but I was able to change the material slots that it left inside of the object, so it does have an individual slot for each one. So if this is interesting to you, check this one out. Up next we have Nomad Sculpt. It seems like a nice sculpting app. I don't have any experience really with sculpting, but I was able to create something hideous with it. I can't speak on how well these would work in a game since sculpting usually involves creating a higher poly count to be able to have the level of detail on them. And especially since we're keeping the game on the tablet itself, you might want to be careful with that. But the app seems to be a nice way to get into sculpting. It's $15.99 for the full version and allows you to export the sculpts. I also went back to try to also make the face of the guy on the Pringles can, and it came out pretty decently pretty quickly. Up next we have Mega Voxels, which to my understanding is a game that you can make voxels in, but it also just lets you create your own. And you can also export these to OBJ files. So here I made a small chest where the top can open because they're two separate parts. And just to briefly take a look at how the different options work, I'm going to make just a very simple blocky chair. And very quickly we're able to reduce the size down so we can build up the back and then we can refine the seating spot and also change the colors very easily. Aside from creating your own assets, you can also download some. I like the ones by Synthi store here, the Polygon assets. And as long as you download the source files and they have a file type that'll work with Godot, you should be able to use them. Before we continue with the video, consider liking and subscribing to tell me that you want videos similar to this one. It really helps the channel grow, and I want to see what direction you guys would like the content to go. So now that we have our assets, we need to import them into the game engine. You can take where the exported file is and copy those or move them into the game's folder. If you haven't created the project with Godot first, open Godot, create a new project, then come back to here and put them in the right spot. Now we can launch Godot engine and pick the project that we put the files into. And that's really all there is to it. Now we have all of our assets that we created inside of our project and we're able to drag and drop them. In this case, we have a 2D example, so I dragged it into a no 2D scene. And we can see there's the one we drew in Piskel. Then we can also drag into 3D ones into a 3D scene so we can see what they look like. I made this chest in three different parts and I had it exported in three different areas, so I had to make sure I grabbed the right parts. We also see that the textures didn't quite line up exactly pixel perfect like they did inside of Mega Voxel. So you might have to do something with the texture there. I'm not quite sure. I didn't get a chance to look into that. But now that we have it inside of the engine, we're able to take it and we can use the rotation in order to make it open. Just like how I wanted it to when I set it up as two different objects. I didn't know how to set the pivot point back further, but it does let you rotate them. So for being on the Android tablet and being able to manipulate a 3D scene, this is very impressive. Taking a look at the other assets, we were able to import 2D, including our snowman. We're also able to import the PNGs that were made from Krita. I didn't know how to import them as a PNG sequence, and this is earlier where I said remember to check the box for transparent, because this is where I noticed that was an issue. But it is able to import. Godot Engine seems very capable right now. It seems that there is a lack of apps to be able to make assets for 3D. 2D, we have a lot of things that are able to make PNGs or make animations. That's perfect for this. If you're trying to make 3D, I didn't find anything to be used for rigging or adding bones to things, so we wouldn't be able to animate that way. If you wanted to animate things like how they did on PlayStation 1 or 2, where they just had all the individual parts next to each other and you just rotate them, that should work perfectly fine, but anything that needs an actual rig to be able to move it around won't work in this, as far as making the assets on the tablet itself. You should be able to download the assets from somewhere else and be able to use them that way, though. So if you made something in one of the apps here, you might be able to bring it into a website like Mixamo and get that rigged there. But the fact that the game engine is fully ready on the tablet to be able to handle these things is such an impressive feat, and I'm always impressed with Godot and all the work that's being put into it. I'm very much looking forward to the future with Godot having a lot more features in it, and with everything that Unity's been doing lately, I know Godot is definitely going to be on my radar. 
As a summary of all the apps that we've looked at so far, I wanted to put up a spreadsheet of that. There's going to be a link in the description for all of these different parts. But the other aspect of the Android tablet that I wanted to talk about is planning your projects. This is something that I use my tablet for a lot. And I just want to go over a couple apps that I use occasionally in order to plan these things out. The first one is Note Shelf. This one I really like. It came with the Galaxy Tab S7 when I first got that. Now I'm on the S8. I like that it's very simple. You can just go in, jot some notes. You can also do a drawing to shape. So if I draw a rectangle here, it turns into a rectangle, like a better one than I could draw. And then you can just make list. You can also add in text, you can highlight, and you could do a couple of the cool things like that. I like that it's able to separate things by notebooks. So you basically make a new notebook, you add notes to that notebook. So it just feels more like you have an actual book of things rather than a bunch of just um, essentially word files or something like that if you're taking notes in those. So this is a way to organize ideas. I don't think this is a great idea for organizing projects. I think somebody like Trello and stuff like that where you could drag and drop the different tasks is better for that. But it's very nice for being able to draw diagrams and get ideas down on paper. Moving on to my favorite app to be able to use for taking notes. I like OneNote a lot. It has a lot of good things going for it. It has more features on the desktop version on PC. But on the tablet, it works perfectly fine. I'm able to save notes and it saves them automatically on the cloud. So I can just bring it up on any device and I could just relook at my notes, update things on the go on my phone, my tablet, go back to my computer at home. And there I have everything. You'll actually see that I use this for the trivia system that I made as a tutorial a little while ago, along with a bunch of other notes on here. And you can see that it has a numbered list and then we can have text side by side with the drawing features you could just draw right over it so if i wanted to just highlight or draw over text i could just do that with the pen attached to the tablet you can also use the highlighter to highlight different things and this is how i would annotate things before i would go back and change it with the text depending on if i was on the tablet or if i was at home on the desktop and you can actually see that i did an entire plan of a game here this was a design document that I was required to do for college, and this was a game for a very long time that I was waiting to make. And you could see that it transformed to this bug bots. So you could see that it's out now. You can actually see the trailer on the different video on the channel, but you'll also see that it's changed a lot since here. So personally, OneNote is my favorite app to be able to plan things out on, especially being able to have that transfer between devices fluently without having to do any extra work on my part. I just make sure that it uploaded, move on to the other device, and I'm good. I'm excited to see where Godot is going to go in the future, especially on the tablet, to be able to see how much more accessible we can make the platform. On top of it being just a great thing in general to be able to have it in more places, we're going to see that possibly have more apps in the future that are going to be able to handle these pitfalls that I've found so far, mostly with the 3D side, but maybe even more with the 2D side as well, we'll see. But it's a very exciting time to start looking into Godot and seeing what it can do. And of course, more than anything, making games. That's what we're here for. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.